Last week, I put out a video called Why Music is Getting Worse, Rick Missed the Mark. And it was a response to a video that Rick Beato had put out called The Real Reason Why Music is Getting Worse. And I did that because I legitimately had something I wanted to say. And also, I I thought it'd be kind of fun to poke at Rick a little bit, who I've known since 1997. And it's just something we've done before. I didn't expect the video to get that many views. I thought I'd maybe get two or 3,000 views at most, but it's kind of blown up. And there were more comments than I've ever gotten before. And I wanted to respond to a bunch of them because maybe I didn't explain myself well. And then some of them were things that made me kind of change my mind. But first, I'd like to talk about what my main point in my video was about, which I don't think a lot of people actually got to because it was it was at the end. But here was my main point. Rick was saying that technology is killing innovation because it's making music easier to do. Now, I know he said other things, but that seemed to be his main point. I think technology is killing innovation because it intrudes on our minds, our creative minds. Art requires uninterrupted space and time for us to go down the rabbit hole of some crazy idea that's stirring around and around in our head. And all these notifications and... Damn, I can't believe I did turn the ringer off. All these notifications... God, all these notifications and, oh my God, Discord. We're being pulled out of ourselves and our creative space. It's also about influences. So back in the day, if you were chasing a song or trying to do a recording or anything like that, and you were having problems, there was no internet to just, you know, go figure that out. There are very few resources. So you were forced to invent your own processes, solutions, and sounds. And if you were really stuck, you would probably reach out to somebody who's a little bit more experienced as a songwriter and musician. And these people were usually vetted. They were probably people who had been out actually doing music for a living. So they're bringing in, you know, new ideas for chord changes and melodies and key changes and stuff like that. Whereas today, if you're stuck on a song, sure, there's a lot of resources out there, but I hate to say it, a lot of these people, from what I've seen, they're all kind of given the same types of advice. And a lot of them have not actually really gone out there and really done it. And the few that have probably did it for a short amount of time before they started making videos. So you're not really getting that depth of knowledge. The people who are really doing music, the real freaking pros, they're too busy doing that to make videos. Or they're not crazy enough to do all of that and later on make videos and stay up all night and not get any sleep and wear yourself out and then you start looking really old and I know I look really old. I'm actually only 27 years old. Anyway, I hope that explains my opinion a little bit better. On to the comments. There are a lot of comments that would say something like, Rick is right and you're wrong, or you're right and Rick was wrong. And uh, first off, I don't think I ever said Rick was wrong. I disagreed with a couple things, but I was kind of just adding to what he said. The other thing is the idea that you can be right or wrong about music seems kind of silly to me because music is subjective. There's not any right or wrong. But this actually makes me think of a story. Years ago, I was in the studio working with a rap producer who's a very good friend of mine, and we were working on tracks. He was going to make some beats. I was going to play some guitar, you know, something that we would do. And uh, we're having some drinks, kind of getting into the mood, and he wanted to listen to some music to kind of get the vibe going. He's like, yeah, pull up Two Live Crew. He starts playing it because I'm figuring we're probably going to do something in that vein, which is fine. You know, I like playing. I'll work on anything. But as we're listening, he looks at me and he goes, hey, if you want to know why I'm in music why I do this, that's why. And then he tells me this whole story about the first time he heard them and how it inspired him and moved him and changed his life and all that. And I'm thinking like, really? Like me, it was Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. Two Live Crew, I don't get it. But you know what? He was sincere. It truly was the thing that changed his life and it meant something to him. And it's like, okay, I I gotta respect that. This guy's gone on to do a lot of hit records and I really respect him a lot, but it's like, you know what? We We don't all have to like the same music, man. It's all right. There's no right, there's no wrong. A lot of people called me out about this. Another big point Rick makes is that Because music is basically free now, it's not valued so much. And I don't know what that really has to do with the quality of music being out there. Yeah, that is kind of a boneheaded thing to say. Even though I make a fraction of what I used to make, I still 
don't think about money that much. I, I need to, but I'm very impractical about it. And also the fact of the matter is I've got a great studio here. I can write, I can play, I can produce, I can mix at a pretty high level. It's, it's actually easy for me to do. I've already got all the gear here and I'm in the studio anyway. And it got me thinking about an artist that I had done some records with. This artist had a deal. You've probably heard their songs and they had money. They could pay me and other producers to hang out in the studio for days and produce and hire musicians and bring bring them in. But this artist is a great writer. They're not an engineer or a producer or a mixer. And now that money's not there. So they've, they've got a home studio and this artist has a friend that comes over and helps them work on songs. And it's, it's still cool stuff, but it's not engineered very well. The the arrangements aren't exactly right. There's a lot of other things that need to happen, but they just don't have the resources to make the kind of records they used to make because they don't have those skills. So, point taken. I saw a lot of comments where people would say something like, oh, it's a conspiracy in the music business or record labels are intentionally picking the bad music and putting it out. It's like... I used to actually think stuff like that, but I got to tell you, I've been in this business a long time and I and I know people are going to hate this answer, but I just got to be honest with you. From my experience, most really, truly, greatly talented people are kind of messed up. There are very few great talents that can balance the creative forces storming in their soul with the practical aspects of life. Labels do want great artists that can write catalog music and songs. And a catalog song is something that gets played over and over and over again for decades, like Queen or The Beatles or Michael Jackson. They want to sign artists that are making music that will sell after they're dead. They don't want to have to keep reinventing the wheel every, every freaking time. They would love to find great artists. Now, I'm not endorsing those blood-sucking pigs, but the problem is the great artists don't return phone calls. They don't show up from meetings. They don't do the things that they were supposed to do. On the other hand, people that are kind of practical and return the phone calls and more business-like, they tend to get ahead because they return the damn phone calls. But they're probably not the most talented people musically, although they're probably great business people. I was just about to upload this video when I got a phone call from my buddy Shadik, who lives out in Alaska, and he made me think of something else about record labels, and that is, back in the old days, labels would do this thing called artist development. They would sign you, and they would invest in albums. They might not expect to have a hit record for two or three albums, and they're willing to make that kind of investment. That went away a long time ago, and nowadays, labels are pretty much signing artists that already have some momentum. They became popular on TikTok or something like that, so basically, they're just being lazy. A lot of people brought up the subject of songwriting, how there's less key changes and less chord changes. There's certainly less bridges. And it's not something that I forgot to talk about. It's just such a big subject. I kind of felt like it's a video on its own. But y'all have a lot of great comments, and I just want to acknowledge them. And they do support Rick's position. In my video, I said this. The people who are serious artists are using technology, and they are making great music. It's just that they have to compete with a horde of hobbyists. And I got a lot of comments where people would say, I'm a hobbyist. And I was like, oh, man, I didn't I didn't mean to be a jerk or anything like that. If you're a hobbyist and you're making music, I don't care if it's bad or it's good or whatever. Man, keep doing it. Put it out. I would never suggest that, you know, amateurs or hobbyists shouldn't put out music. Put it out. If we just all got to work a little harder to promote and get our stuff out there to be heard, then we just got to work harder. And if you're having a hard time finding good music because of the horde of hobbyists, then maybe you need to get off your damn ass and work a little bit harder to find the good music. I'll also say this. The hobbyists are probably having a lot more fun because I've noticed sometimes when people are trying to be so professional, it's not fun anymore and they make boring music, which is why I've kind of developed this kind of weird mental state that even if I'm doing something at the highest level of professionalism as far as the job and all that's concerned, I still just, in my mind, I'm just still thinking I'm doing a demo. I'm doing a demo. I, I just make sure it's in tune and the technical part's right. But yeah, that's how I think. All right. This is a, a little bit embarrassing <laughs> because I had a lot of people comment and say, oh, I thought I was clicking on a Rick Beato video. And they accused me of stealing the thumbnail. Actually, Rick said the same thing when he called me. I was like, Rick, I didn't steal your thumbnail. Actually, I stole another frame from your video because I didn't like where your hand was at. But I just thought it'd be kind of funny to make it look like I was there with Rick. And then my wife points this out to me after I put out my last video. I'm like, oh, my God, Rick, I swear I'm not stealing your thumbnails. However, maybe we're connected psychically or something. I don't know. But got me thinking, you know, hey, maybe, maybe that's a... Maybe it's a good strategy. I could just copy other people's thumbnails. 
there are a few comments where people said things like, oh, Rick's going to get mad or, oh, how dare you talk about your friend that way? And it's kind of like, it's kind of hard to describe the kind of relationships we have in the music business. It's like we're all kind of competitors. We're all friends. We support each other, but we mess with each other. And, you know, he did call me up and he did bust my chops about some of this stuff. But it's cool. That's, you know, it's just how it is. We actually ended up talking a long time and mostly we talked about friends and family and catching up on stuff. It was, it was a great talk. I saw a lot of comments where people saying things that Rick should do and things that he is doing. One of them was uh, that he does interview younger musicians. I think that might have been a response to me saying something about him maybe not being in touch with the streets and newer music and all that. Yes, he does have younger musicians on. They do tend to be highly skilled instrumentalists. I don't really see him bringing in some kind of sloppy band that also happens to write these great songs and has this innovative vibe. It's, It's not what he does, but that's fine. Other people say it would be a great platform. He should like talk about this and talk about that. It's like, you know what? Rick worked his butt off to build this channel and he can do whatever he wants. And his interview videos where he's interviewing musical legends, those are a gift to the world. I don't care what you think about his other videos, but those are, who else is doing that? These people deserve recognition. I applaud that. There is so much more that I could say. I could talk about this for hours, but I do have three things I want to say. First off is that the comments were great. I mean, they're actually really inspiring, and there are a lot of ideas that came up that actually inspired another video I put out a couple days ago. And then the comments from that video inspired another video, which I'm already working on. Also, a lot of people were mentioning new artists that they thought were really good, that deserved attention. I made a list. I think I got all of them, hopefully. And I was going to put them in this video, but there's just too many of them. So I'm thinking, I'm going to I'm gonna listen to them. And who knows, maybe I can find one or two that I really like and maybe bring them in here to do a recording session or something like that. We'll see. I, I it, It'll only happen if I like them and it makes some sense. But I'm, I'm going to look into it. And finally... When I put this video out, I totally expected to get a ton of hate comments. And yeah, there were a few, and I did delete some that were nasty. Um, But what surprised me is how many were really cool and inspiring and well thought out. And (laughs) it kind of blew me away. I've been working on this channel for years, and it's been a slow growth. And this has been really awesome. But the other thing was is that there's a lot of passion. Y'all care. Y'all care. I've never seen so much passion. So I just got to say, y'all rock. I love this. Thank you.